all right, I wanted to record myself doing a night guard and seeing how much time it really takes. So I'm taking my sweet time typing in night guard dash patient's name dash blend. I'm probably wasting a few seconds here, but I like to have the patient's name on there. Makes it easier when you're uh, in the rayware slicer to find the file. I'm going to pick the type as a mandible, you know, import my models. I use the shift key to select them both and then I hit import. Once they import, I'm going to immediately select the lower one hit the, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the opposing one next. After that, we do our landmarks, right, left, uh, and sizal and midline. That's to determine our occlusal plane. Also to set up the virtual articulator. This works very similar in principle to how the Kois face bows work these days. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and check for occlusal clearance. In this case, I didn't have any green marks, which means I'm not within 1.75. Patient slightly over opened. So I'm going to hit a negative compensation and fix that a little bit here. We ended up dropping the pin about 0.6 millimeters there. I got one last green dot. That's fine for me. That's all I want is the first green dot to show up. That means we've got the patient pretty close to where we need to be opening wise. We don't want it to be any bigger than it needs to be. I'm now doing the path of draw and determining whether or not I have a good one. Now typically the nice, I had capture view and then you'll see the black shaded areas where the undercut would be. I'm gonna go ahead and hit tweak posterior a couple times, I almost always do, just to get a little bit more undercut on the front teeth when I draw them. And now we're gonna do a refractory model. This is the model, a duplicate model with all the undercuts made to it. And then the splint outline comes next. Uh, I teach people to and my team members to do this one tooth at a time. And here I got a little bit sidetracked. I, you know what it was? I was in blue sky plan mentality here. And so I started to hold down shift. You do not need to hold down shift while you're clicking with D3 splint. You just need to click uh, just as you would with clinics or medit splint or any of the other ones. But uh, in blue sky plan, when you're doing a surgical guide, you hold down uh, control or shift or something one of the modifier keys to make your surgical guide outline. I think that's why I was doing that and initially threw me off and cost me about you know, probably about 20 seconds or so until I figured out that cost me another few seconds. I got a little bit too fast. Normally you click, change your view, click, change your view. I like how clinics does it automatically for you. D3 splint does not. So if you get off track, you just right click and delete to delete the green point. That's a problem. You see that red show up. It'll actually resolve itself if you just give it a little bit of time off it, or I'll just wiggle my mouse near there and it'll do as well. Now I've got it all selected. I'm going to hit next after double checking, of course, to see I got everything. Now you just hit an eyedropper inside your boundary and it turns all it turns purple. That's to confirm you have a nice watertight boundary. They're going to ask you one more time. I've never actually found a time when I needed to do anything between there too. The Maxillary curves is the next step and the most important and most distinctive step of D3 splint compared to literally everything else I've used. No other night guard program attempts to actually make a flat plane on your flat plane splint. And this is how uh, D3 splint does it. We're defining the lateral boundary with a maxillary curve. Now we're defining the medial boundary of the flat plane with the mandibular curve. And so I'm gonna click through the occlusal grooves Basically, we're trying to keep the working cusps supported by this flat plane and all excursive movements. I'm now going to start clicking a whole bunch of things by memory. I don't actually need to stop and look, though you have that option. I'm just trying to get done quickly. So I have used those boundaries to make our wax rim or our flat plane. We've merged it with our splint, our splint wrapper, and then we're going to go ahead and mark out our mark out our contact teeth. This is one of the this is one of the more tedious steps is you have to click. I think margin making and a contact marking are the two things that are the most tedious in D3 splint. I think D3 splint is also unique in making this too. But there's a lot of power in it potentially for advanced users as well. I'm going to go ahead and subtract out a bunch of things now. Uh, it doesn't show you it, but while you're making it, it actually has generated all the excursive movements and deleted them out. So now you have full support 
for anything and all the excursive interferences have been removed. I'm going to go ahead and trim it or actually not trim it. We're removing the intaglio now. So that's done. It's now hollowed out for the teeth. I'm going to emboss the patient's name on the side. Next is a final optional step, but if you're doing more than one night guard, I think it's invaluable to have the patient's name embossed on it. Otherwise, it gets very tricky to identify which night guard be belongs to which patient. So there we go. I'm going to emboss it. This operation is somewhat slow, but you know, eventually it gets done. And then we'll go ahead and save the file, export it. If you're keeping track on your watch, this total workflow took me roughly six minutes if we deleted out the bloopers there. So for me, it's anywhere between five to 10 minutes for a night guard design, typically closer to five. For my team members, it seems to be that when they first start, it takes them 30 minutes. And then as they get more practice and proficiency, they get it down to about 10 to 15. So that gives you an idea of the time involved and with the time that tells you how much cost is involved. I hope you enjoy this. We're just going to save the files, wrap this up. Thanks for watching.